Hey nerds, we are talking about The Mandalorian, episode 303, The Convert. We're going to review the episode and then get into a breakdown of the episode starting now. Welcome to Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. And I'm Colin. Hey, so we recorded this last week, but I had some audio issues, so we're recording it again this week. Hopefully we can get through it a little bit quicker than we did last time. So the spoiler-free logline for this episode is, On Coruscant, former Imperials find amnesty in the New Republic. This is written by Noah Floor and John Favreau and directed by Lee Isaac Chung. So Colin, what do you think of this episode? I thought that this episode was really solid. I think that it was definitely, I would say, an improvement from episode 302. There's its there's some great action scenes that, that happens at the beginning of the episode. And then it gets into a separate story that we'll, we can definitely get into. There's a lot of layers to it, a lot of a lot of different types of that we can do a quick deep dive on. And then, and then, and then at the end, it could then like a third act at the end as well. So yeah, yeah. overall, I would say that it's definitely a, a solid, solid episode it's... overall. And, it's, and, it, and it has some story that advances the story, story and there's there is sort of a conclusion, of conclusion as well at the end of it so itself. it's again pretty solid and i would definitely i definitely can give it a very good score but i'll leave that i'll leave that after your time nathan in terms of the score yeah, yeah. i give it a good rating as well actually a very high rating when we recorded this the first time i think i said that it's the best of both things that i like on star wars it has a very and or plot in the middle and a lot of action stuff at the beginning and a little bit at the end so yeah it was a very satisfying episode for me i appreciate the continuation of where we left off in the end of the last episode with bo -Katan. It doesn't develop as much as I would like, but I still like the detour that they make. Because like I said, they get into some and or like intrigue here that I always am open to exploring about like making the world more complex and making it more layered. I'm always open to that sort of exploration of the Star Wars universe. So that's not, it's not necessarily just for kids, especially since we're adults watching the show. So we don't have to belabor it because like I said, I'm going to try to keep this down to like a shorter one than the hour that we talked last time. So how would you rate this episode? Definitely. I would say at eight. I know that my scores were lower, and yeah. I know that I. You told me Nathan that I was a very harsh reader. I could be a pretty harsh reader. It could have been a nine, but I think that some of the it drags a little bit for me, and and it does goes deeper into conversation yeah, and things. So, so I kind of lowered it just a bit at an eight. I, yeah, I when we recorded this the first time, I said nine, and I still I'm still there. It's like it's the for, yeah. it's a movie it's a movie marathon for me. I definitely could watch this over and over again. I did in preparation for when we recorded the first time, and the stuff in the middle specifically. There are multiple layers to it I, again because we're recording. This is the second time. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to all the layers discussed last time because we have to actually record for this week as well. But it was a really good episode. And I'm really interested to see where it goes from here. There are a lot of developments here that could be very interesting if they decide to develop those threads. So, yeah, it was a very satisfying episode for me. All right. So, we got to talk about it. So, if you're enjoying the conversation, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps other people find our content. Really appreciate it. All right. So, spoilers ahead. <laughs> All right, so we have screen starts from this episode. Okay. Uh, so jump over there to the beginning. All right, so this episode starts where the previous episode ended, basically in the, the living waters and the mines of Mandalore there, where okay. we have Bo-Katan saving Din. She saw something. She asked him if she if he saw the same thing because she's she, like she's like in disbelief here. And then they leave. Like I said, I would have hoped for that to have a little bit more development in this episode than it does oh, besides, yeah. besides her like just being a little curious about what she saw and maybe disbelief of what she saw but like as soon as they get to space they start to get bombarded by people so maybe if they had a little bit more time to think about it or she had a little bit more time to think about it and there wasn't this firefight that they land themselves in and which it, this is the part that the more action stuff so uh, this right. uh, firefight in disguise is pretty some really great stuff not only that so like I, we talked about this the last time so like they do a really cool firefight then he jumps out of the ship he uses his jetpack to land and kind of crash lands and also nearly shot by this imperial so all that stuff mm -hmm. cool as well action action pack stuff then she i think in the middle of this she he comes to help her and in the middle of the fight she also uses her her ship to like turn around in the middle, middle of the air oh so yes all this stuff was really cool yeah it definitely was really cool i think that this pretty much when i first saw, saw this i was with the tie interceptors and yeah. her maneuvering through the canyon yeah it reminds me of empire strikes back and also the feel of it is very andory the when yeah. there was a scene from you where you had the fireworks yeah, light yeah, up yeah. the sky and then with the time with the ship and the tie fighters falling behind that that was pretty cinematic this is just as cinematic but not in the it didn't it didn't have the same type of color were much more bright it was much more 
vibrant. It was much more, much more, yeah. It was yeah. much more vibrant the colors, but this this had more much more going on in this fight. I mm. think, and it's also you could see it very clearly. I suppose that b the other one was at night. Yeah, the firefights often, sorry, the fights in the air, the ac acrobatic love. fights in the air are often very cool in, in Star Wars. So yeah, she, her her home is bombarded and she's left with nothing. She's she almost goes off to these people know. and uh, nearly gets herself killed. So but he has her fi follow him, and that's where the story breaks off from them, and we get to Doctor Pershing. Yeah. Now I can see why people might not have liked this, but like I said, this is the Andorish stuff that I really do like. It, it was yeah. it's really interesting to think. So we can't delve into this as much as we did last week, but like the whole question of whether or not the Republic is any better than the Empire, seeing how they're having this guy wear a emblem like the Jews had to wear, although he mm -hmm. was a the war criminal, right? He was doing terrible things. Like you also don't want to lose track of him. So all that stuff is really interesting. He does this speech. He talks about the fact that his work was corrupted by the Empire, but he, his uh, motivation was his mother. This conversation with yeah. the rich people, not even knowing uh, which side was trying to recruit him, uh, but they just keep out of it. Very reminiscent yeah. of, uh, of our world. This is the kind of stuff, like I said, as an adult, pretty much. It seems very true to life, unfortunately. Regimes change, but the rich stay stay rich and stay powerful. You yeah. know, they're like a buff buffet, right. while ordinary people suffer, basically, or droids suffer, or any other people that were involved in the war yeah. suffered. I think from time to time, a rich person might be made an example of, but for the most part, it's not like the whole upper class it gets routed and, 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 and things are taken from them. So it's that's usually right. not what happens in a revolution. So he goes to this amnesty housing is what I think it's what it's called. Is and it? the other yeah. thing that we were talking about last week is they have numbers instead of names. Again, this is dehumanizing. So you, now, you, you start to think maybe they're very much like the the Empire because the Empire is also mm -hmm. had, they gave the clones numbers and they also gave the, the stormtroopers numbers. But right. the other side of the coin of this is that there will be retaliation against people if people had their names. So is them being like the Empire or is this them protecting these people? So it's interesting. And then he sees yeah. this woman from the ship. Her name is Alaya. Alaya Kane. Yeah, Alaya. Yeah. So Alaya Kane, she worked on the same ship with Moth Gideon and he's very surprised to see her here. They had this somewhat inappropriate conversation about what you miss about the Empire and he's like, oh no, we, the, we all are happy that the Empire is gone but he's like, and they're, but they're like, oh, we wish we could be in space again and they're talking about, he says he wants yellow biscuits or whatever. So it's interesting who she, the way she plays this, we talked about this last week, it's unclear whether or not she is a true believer like in the Republic and she was always like uh -huh. a double agent or she a triple agent and just working for Moff Gideon and she just wanted to have revenge on this guy because he was a traitor to Moff Gideon or trying to change this guy she's trying to radicalize this guy like he just wanted to work he, the way that he's going to justify it to himself if he survives that the thing that she does to him at the end is is I was just trying to help the new Republic and they fried my brain so maybe I should work for the Empire maybe we should get the Empire back maybe that's that maybe that's her goal to radicalize him but do you do get a sense like I said that this this workspace is very similar to the workspace of the guy from from andor very again reg regimes change but the office space pretty much stays the same it's they it's, pretty much use the same thing yeah. they were, they probably fabro was like oh yeah, yeah. We, maybe we should you guys are doing some good work in the indoor maybe i should yeah. just use the same shooting location use the set yeah <laughs> Although yeah. I have to say that Andor uses more natural, not, right. uh, like they, they shoot outside a lot more. They don't use the yeah. volume nearly as much. And you can tell, like, this is obviously a G background. Whereas when they're in the city in Andor, like yeah. they're in the same exact city, but I feel like they built sets as opposed to, and then you maybe use some paintings for the background. Yeah. Oh, the, the actor who plays Pershing, he, I think he posted on social media that he had his son actually yeah. visited the, the set. So some just... of it was built out. So okay. the people yeah. sitting down behind them, I think are probably def definitely there, but like the first right. people in the far background, those are probably mm. that's probably yeah, animation yeah right. and this th thing that he's touching there as well so like yeah some of this stuff is that but like as you get further and further out like into the like out here sorry out here they, they probably cuts off right about right here no mm. more extensions but yeah it's it, this whole back and forth of her just trying to get his trust is uh, interesting yeah, she's yeah. good and, it, and you don't get you don't sense that she's doing the double agent thing until the very end where they trade names and she says the communications officer and it's like yeah i don't think so <laughs> there i remember that scene with goth gideon you seem like a much higher up person than that when you were talking yeah, yeah. to him so yeah right. this uh, you mentioned here last week about how some of the signs change that the buildings are the same and then exactly. the signage is different so, so back here this building it seems it looks like it's like an imperial building it's just they just changed the flag on the side from the imperial circle to the new republic so yeah. yeah and it's also and apparently the new republic has replaced a bunch of people with droids which is a little impersonal i think this is also trying to show how the why the new republic failed as well and why the new order was able to rise because they're not repeating the mistakes of the past they're just making new mistakes because i I think another person could have sensed that he was like drifting without having to use a double agent to entrap him if, if he was speaking to a, a human counselor. Yeah, I mean, even the grief card mentioned in the previous episodes that the yeah it might be that the empire has fallen, but at the same time the new republic is struggling. They really can't have much 
control or enforcement and for example the bar so it's like so it, yeah in a lot of ways some people have suffered like i said but then there's people that say nothing really has changed yeah my, have, my figureheads might change but leadership might change but nothing really has made a difference in their lives unfortunately. I, I also think the new republic is not a it's not a federation like the like the old republic not the old republic like the republic was the old republic it's, it's <laughs> much further on back but the republic so the power isn't centralized and i can understand why they don't want to have the power centralized they just came from an empire where they, when the power was centralized they fought a weird a war just before the empire because of uh, the centralization of the, of the republic <laughs> the clone war so i can understand if they were trying to put back a society a confederation might make more sense but it also makes means that there's no central power to they're loosely affiliated these these societies so things fall through these cracks which is why you could have like empire warlords who there aren't, aren't enough resources to to get together because there isn't a centralized army or anything um, get together to route these warlords it's interesting yeah so this is i think when he was asking for equipment and he's like no i don't even know if an amnesty person can get equipment so he gets increasingly mm -hmm. frustrated here just eating all his biscuits this is where he was he's basically just like the, i think this is where the droid asks have you experienced feelings of anger or resentment and then he's like oh our main main objective is to help the republic and then and that supersedes supersedes everything else so yeah i don't know they did him wrong but also he hasn't been out like this is like i said like we were talking about last week he hasn't been out that long but before he decided to like start breaking the rules it's like he hasn't he hasn't been out that long. He has. She's just nudged him just a little bit. So is he being entrapped, or is he just a mad scientist who doesn't think about any of the re repercussions? Because again, he could have asked why the band is there, and he didn't decide to do okay. that. He decided that he knew best. He knew better than all the people who actually put the rules in place, which were put in place not by fiat like the emperor did, but probably by representatives being sent by different worlds. So he decided mm -hmm. that his thought about genetic cloning is better than all the other people who voted for people to be sent, who voted on this the band. Mm -hmm. So. It you can't really feel too bad for him because yeah maybe he's still again blind by the fact that he lost his mom he lost his mother through through that through that traumatic experience and he's not able to sure. go with Hama in that way either we yeah. talked about this last week though too as well like your love for your loved one is an explanation but not, not an excuse the last of us <laughs> season finale it showed that uh, again i won't i won't spoil the last of us but yeah your love doesn't excuse you being able to do anything you want so yeah this this whole training season is a, is a bit long but again it's her trying to get him to trust her and bond with her the conversation that they have here she mentions that she's done this before and let's see what else here and then they get very slowly chased by this robot all the okay. robots look very similar yep like they don't have yeah they don't have human they don't, i mean they replace all the stormtroopers and everything with with these robots in pretty much every part of life that that's doing administration any administration or law enforcement it's these droids is what i meant to say okay. But also, do you think that they could have, when they were jumping off of the train here, do you think they, how do they survive that? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, they there's able no, to survive that? Yeah, there's no way they just survived. This is where they would have died if this was rea reality. They had them, <laughs> exactly. They had them the, them land on some sort of soft ish looking thing, but it's not soft enough that it's, yeah, it's, they would have broken all their bones. Uh, so if they survived, they would have broken all their bones. Uh, so yeah, you see some Star Destroyer here. That's the end, actually, a pretty cool shot of Star Destroyer that's like dilapidated in the shipyard okay. here. And I think we saw the shipyard earlier in the season of the Bad Batch this season as well. But right. of course, 20 years in the past when the new when the empire had just started so empire didn't really last that long it's terrible but 20 years okay. it was also unstable. yeah it's also unstable though because it was written by it's, just, it's held together by fear and in and, and terror so yeah and as and, and, and the death star basically the death star it, it, the, and the death star and also it. and as we saw in the in the mandalore not the mandalore and or the rebels tried to destabilize it by making them even by attacking them and making them be even more draconian so that <laughs> it'd be more and more untenable for the for the empire to last so yeah yeah this is where she says let me go i asked switch over it a little bit she says that nice to meet you dr pershing scientist and then she says a lie came communications officer that's a lot. Yeah. So, so like I said, I don't know if she's a double spy or a triple spy or whatever, but like she's something else is going on there. So yeah, they go through all the stuff here. They and then they leave the facility and she turns them over here. Yeah, when they were inside Star Destroyer, there, do you think that that they were all, like it seemed as though from her actions they were in cahoots? Like she was like, like don't, don't go, go there. there. Like, like, is she trying to like play no, it off? Do you no, think? No, or? she was trying to. She was no. I think she was playing him from the beginning. I think giving all okay. the days ago when she gave him the biscuits, it was to eventually turn him turn him in. She was a double agent for the Republic the entire time. Now, like I said, mm -hmm. it remains to be seen whether or not she's a triple agent for mm -hmm. for Moff Gideon. And then I think we also noted here that he said that it would trap in front of a man <laughs> Mount Calamari, basically calling back to Admiral Akbar. And, and yep. I think it was the second movie. The second. No, uh, the third movie. Return third, of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. And yeah, he he said that he went goes he went. The procedure himself and it does seem 
like when he turns this on, it, he is feeling pleasurable. And then she pretends that she's his friend and turns it all the way up to 11 or whatever. You can look at that, look at that. The sinister look is like, Face. betrayed me, yeah. you betrayed me, and I'm going to get back at you right now. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, we go back to, this is the convert that shows up, that showed up in the be beginning of the second, the last episode, or sorry, the first episode. So Pazzo is, again, his rival to believe that he bathed in living waters. They go in to talk to the armorer, and she verifies that they are um, which yeah, they, uh, they the, did the, go to the, the living the, the, water. Yeah, they, they, they did go to the living waters. I was trying to see if there was anything else with the conversation outside. The conversation outside was just our previous with the saying that you're Bo, Bo Katan. So yeah, so she, she verifies here. I guess they, the waters actually have some sort of properties that you can test if this, this energy thing is. This is why they temper the Beskar in it. So right. so the armor says that he's redeemed and also lets her redeem her. Also says that she's redeemed as well and she can stay because she hasn't turned, taken off her. Okay. Like I said, when we recorded this first time, I actually had to go back and rewind and say, see whether or not she did. But like she saves him yeah. she never takes off her helmet and then they get into this firefight so she never had a chance to take off her helmet basically yep. so it's just, just, by co just, just by coincidence so this ends with her staring at the, the image of the mythosaur and then we will see what, the, what, what where that goes or where that leads yeah it is pretty interesting like the evolution from her like at the beginning when Din met with bo and she was like you guys are crazy and now yeah. she's like she's now like because of her we talked about this last week because of her awakening or her spiritual moment she's become yeah. one of these guys that that like, she's like you yeah. guys are crazy. So it's, it gets pretty interesting. You're feeling ways. better about her conversion this week than you were last week. You were, you were like, she's drinking, she's drinking the Kool-Aid. She's, she's drinking the like, Kool-Aid. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Now that I've seen like today's episode, mm -hmm. probably. But yeah. yeah, I was like having this weird feeling because yeah, yeah she was so dead set against it yeah. in, in the previous season. And then now just because she saw the myth of sword, she's like, oh, yeah. I weakened. So it was yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, like, like <laughs> I said last week, this in this universe, magic exists. So like in the deck context, if it was a person who decided that they were going to find religion and, and, and I don't know, think that uh, if you want to make it an analogy, like that the world is flat or whatever, or some other <laughs> weird thing in our world, sure. But in their world, okay. they're literally like space magicians slash knights who can make okay. things move with their minds. And that never been really explained. They tried to explain it with the prequels or Metacorians or whatever, which didn't really explain anything. So space magic exists. So all the stuff that's okay. happening on Mandalore, these prophecies could exist as well. So I don't know. We should, we should, any other final thoughts before we, we wrap it up? All right. So that is what we thought. Please let us know what you think. So comment down below, like, share, and subscribe, and check out our last review or check out one of our reviews of Picard. All right. Bye.